Hi there, here's a rundown of Newton's second law of motion. Let's consider a parachutist falling down. Now, if the sum of the forces is equal to zero, then this is a job for Newton's first law of motion. If, however, the sum of the forces is not equal to zero, then this is a job for Newton's second law of motion. Let's consider the parachute just as he jumps out of the plane. Whoops, forgot his parachute, there it is. Okay, he is falling and the forces on him are gravity, okay, weight force W, which is downwards, and it's quite big, um, mg, W equals mg, and the force is up, uh, air resistance, which is smaller. So the resultant force is downwards. We also note at this point, since he's falling downwards, then velocity is also in a downwards direction. So the black arrow, the black vector is velocity, can't be added to the red vector, which is a force. We're talking about forces here, as well as motion. Now Newton's second law of motion is in play here, and it's governed by, or summarized by, the equation F equals MA. So if the force is downwards, and then mass is a scalar quantity. Mass does not have direction, so the acceleration must have the same direction as the force. So force equals ma. He will accelerate downwards. He's getting faster. Let's see what happens when he's fallen a little bit further. Well, the weight is the same, but the air resistance will be bigger, so that it is the, uh, the same, equal and opposite to the weight force. In other words, now the resultant is equal to zero. So if we substitute into F equals MA, we have the resultant force, which is zero, is equal to the mass, which is unchanged. So therefore, the acceleration must be zero. In other words, the velocity remains unchanged. Back to Newton's first law. Now, a moment later, he opens the parachute, and what happens is the rapid increase in surface area means there's, it's catching a lot more air, and that extra air will resist. So the air resistance is now much larger suddenly, then the weight force, which means the resultant is now upwards. So this is like these things on telly you see where somebody pulls the ripcord, you see the parachute open, and it looks like they fly upwards. That's because they have um, rapidly slowed down, but the guy with the camera hasn't pulled his ripcord yet, so he is still falling downwards and getting faster and faster, or at least at that at that top speed of uh, free fall, which is called terminal velocity. Not because you're terminal, but because you're not going to get any faster. Notice that the velocity is down, but the resultant force is up. So, substituting into Newton's second law, we have uh, the um, resultant force, which is upwards, is equal to the mass and therefore the acceleration must be upwards. I'm not putting in numbers here just to give you an idea. And if we have the velocity in one direction but the acceleration in the other direction that means the speed is going to reduce. The object is slowing down. Now of course after the ripcord's been pulled the parachutist slows and slows and slows until they reach a new normal. You find as the 
speed slows down, then also the air resistance will slow down until the two again are balanced. You've got the weight force down and the air resistance up and they cancel each other out so that the resultant is zero. Again, substituting, we have zero force is equal to the mass times zero acceleration. So again, uh, the speed during this phase of flight remains unchanged. There's zero acceleration, zero acceleration. So um, the speed stays the same. Now this speed with a big parachute would be slower than the uh, free fall speed, which she had earlier before the parachute was pulled. Here, if we have a, a sled going down a hill, we know that it's going to be getting faster. That means the resultant force is in the same direction as the velocity. As it uh, goes down, it reaches a maximum speed, but when it's going uphill, well, we have a velocity going up the hill, but we know it's slowing down, so that tells us that the resultant force will be in a direction against the direction of motion. So it's quite possible to have a velocity going one way and an acceleration going the other way. And we can see how the speeds change due to those um, accelerations. Now let's consider the case of a bus view from above driving along at a steady speed. At the moment the velocity is constant but it wants to make a left-hand turn. Now if you're sitting in the bus uh, before that left-hand turn you just feel a steady um, ride, a little bit bumpy maybe depending on the road. But when you, the passenger, when you the passenger are sitting in that seat, you are riding along with the bus and uh, your inertia, you want to keep going in the same direction at the same speed because if there's no force on you, you want to keep going. So as the bus turns, it has to push you that way has to provide an unbalanced force and it will do that either through the seat acting on your bum or if it's a really fast left hand turn you will feel the right hand wall of the bus pushing you um, to the left or if you're sitting next to somebody you'll feel the person on your right pushing you to the left as you as, as they push into your body so we see the effect of a sideways force causes turning. If the force is sideways, you see the resultant force um, here is at right angles to the velocity, then it doesn't make the bus faster, it doesn't make the bus slower because it's not pulling it backwards, it simply changes the direction of the bus. And if the bus was turning around a big wide turn and kept the same speed then the force would be changing the direction of the force would be changing so that it's always at right angles to the direction of motion until the bus straightens out again at which point r is equal to zero